What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here with episode number two in our video log series and I'll admit it right now, you can put me in chains but I used a dubious title to get you here. So look up above, it says MMOs must die and it says it in like a terrifying fashion too, it's got like capital letters and like periods in weird spots but no, that's because it's an acronym. So today I wanted to talk about a little bit of an experience I had and not necessarily the experience itself but it sort of spurred this conversation for me. I was at GameStop the other day and I was pre-ordering the Elder Scrolls online because I like to believe that rainbows and fairy dust and good things still happen in the universe. And I was sort of thinking about the decline of the MMO genre and sort of just milling about in my head as a longtime MMO player. Here we go. I'll say, what are my qualifications as an MMO player? I have over 600 days played. If you combine my EverQuest, EverQuest 2, World of Warcraft, and Rift, 600 days worth of game time logged into an alternate reality between four games over the last... Eight or nine years, I don't know. I don't even remember anymore. But what I'm saying is I've played a lot of MMOs. In fact, they made up the primary form of video gaming for me for a long, long time. And I've been watching their decline sort of lugubriously. It's made me sad. I don't really like it because I do like those games, but I feel like it has nothing to offer anymore. Like every time a new MMO comes out, I'm just like, it's going to suck. And I feel like that cynical attitude needs to be dispelled. And so the acronym I've concocted here are sort of my ideas for what developers need to do in order to get their industry out of the muck. Obviously, I'm an armchair warrior here. I could be talking totally out of my ass as I have nothing on the line. I have no money, no stocks, no anything. And so really, I have nothing to lose here by suggesting these things. But still, I thought I'd throw them out into the universe. And hopefully you guys agree with me. And if you don't, yeah, that's cool too. Whatever. But anyways, the D in my DIE acronym stands for Do Not Overvalue Your Brand. This is one of those common things that I think has been cropping up over the last few years as more and more large developers decide to jump into the MMO arena. We saw it with Bioware, we're now seeing it with Zenimax. A lot of these companies with huge intellectual properties behind them are now jumping into the arena hoping to grab their little piece of the MMO pie. And now, with games such as Star Wars The Old Republic, I feel like this is a big stepping stone for them. Because with large companies with an established IP, they tend to think that they can pretty much just float their MMO on the fact that they have a popular intellectual property backing it. So we saw it with Star Wars The Old Republic. You had Bioware dancing around going, We have Star Wars! Come play our game! And really, once you got past the point that it was just Star Wars, what you would find is that really Star Wars The Old Republic was World of Warcraft in a Star Wars skin with just a few extra things added like the Starfighter kind of little Star Fox missions. That's not enough. You can't just copy World of Warcraft and hope to be a success anymore. It's just simply not going to occur. And honestly, I don't think it ever worked in the past for anyone except for World of Warcraft. What you need to do is you need to balance your game around the content. Come up with new ideas, create content that players want to play instead of having a brand that you want them to play content of. You see that little shift right there? There is a difference. You want to make sure that your content is the draw. Sooner or later, word of, word of mouth will get around and you will have a player base. I stands for innovation. And I realize this is a really, really cheap thing to throw out there as an armchair warrior because I'm not offering any real solutions. I'll admit that up front. I don't really have the brain power to come up with the complex solutions that would be required in order to reinvigorate an entire genre of video gaming. However, I feel like innovation has been either on a decline or on the other hand, it has been very limited in MMOs as of the last five to seven years. What I mean is that innovation has only occurred on a liminal level over the last half a decade. In that case, what you'll find is that a lot of MMOs have like that one thing that they do that's innovated. With Terra, it's its combat, but they try and sell you only on the combat. Everything else pretty much functions like a normal MMO. If you look at Rift, their innovation was the fact that every class breaks up into five classes, and you can multi-class them as freely as you want. You can hot swap between them, but other than that, the crafting was identical, the rating was identical, the dungeons were identical. That was their only innovation. So when I say that MMOs don't offer anything except at a surface level, Level, kind of that epidermis of innovation, that's what I mean. What you need is real change. And some of the ideas that I would have for that would be kind of not getting rid. So we obviously, if you play Guild Wars 2, you notice that they tried to get rid of the Holy Trinity. Didn't work. One of the things that I kind of learned from Guild Wars 2 is I think that the Holy Trinity needs to exist. If you don't know what the Holy Trinity is, it's the tank, healer, DPS, trichotomy that has existed within every single game for like the last... 10 years. It's been there for a while. If you've been around the block, the 
it'll be no stranger to you. But what I'm saying is I think that needs to stay, but it needs to be moved around a little bit. I think Rift had the right idea in that you take your classes, but every class has like two flavors of DPS, two flavors of healing, and a flavor of tanking or something of that nature, so that you can kind of mix and match in between all of these trees. If that means your game has less classes, then so be it. But that's where I would start because I feel like Rift was one of the games of the last couple years that really actually offered something new that needs to be kept as we move into the future. Most other games, eh, not so much. Now then, the E stands for existent content. And this sort of ties back into my don't overestimate your brand and innovation. But at the same time, existent content is the one thing that I see MMOs die over. If you look at Star Wars, The Old Republic, if you look at any game that has a strong PvE and PvP community that adopts it for at least a one month to three month period, that end game content almost never exists in new games. And I understand that might require them to hold the game back in beta for a few more months while they test it. But my recommendation would be MMO developers do that. Just wait a few more months. Let the people cry on the forums. Let them worry about the game coming out later. But give it a few more months and release your game with really polished raid content and PvP content. Make sure it's at least partially balanced before you put it out there. Because what I find right now is that most MMOs seem to bank on the fact that leveling will be their biggest form of content in the first month. I, being a hardcore player, know that that's not the case. Most players, at least your average MMO player, who has at least played MMOs at a semi-core level, so I'm not talking casual, but I'm not talking hardcore either, kind of your middle-of-the-road player, will blow through leveling up in two to three weeks when an MMO comes out, because that's when you got the most energy for the game. You're like, yeah, it's new, it's exciting, let me hit this thing as hard as I can, and then you get to endgame, and that's usually the big speed bump that you run into that stops everybody from playing and being like, well, this game kind of sucks. There's nothing to do here. At that point, it puts developers in the odd position of having to backpedal. And so now they've kind of relied on people to use leveling as the only form of content for a month while they develop the raid content. That means if they miss one deadline, they are hosed because your hardcore community is going to die off. Your PvP community sort of relies on other things, so I'm not going to talk about them here. But I would be willing to bet that most of your middle-range casuals to middle-range hardcore players are going to hit endgame within three to three and a half weeks, too. So, you know, you've got a large proportion of your content tied up and not being used within three weeks. And that means you really need to get that raid content out there. It needs to be comprehensive, it needs to be challenging, and it needs to have gear checks and things of that nature to make sure people stay in the same spot. Now, of course, I... See, now that I'm saying it sort of stands anathema to innovation to kind of keep the old raid systems. I do think that dungeons and raids need to be reworked. As for me personally, some of the most fun I've ever had is the content that I personally invented as a social structure between me and my friends. The example that I would give you is the Anixia quest chain in World of Warcraft. I had more fun on that quest chain with a group of four friends than I had pretty much doing anything else in the game. Doing Jailbreak, doing all of those Black Rock Depths quests, gathering up all those little things. It really made you feel like you were part of an epic quest. You got the announcement from the king when you turned it in, all that fun stuff. I feel like those are the kind... I think that's the kind of content that games need to focus on. That really got me. I, I'm a hardcore raider, I will admit that, but at the same time, I've never thought of a raid that was more fun than doing the qualifying quest to get into the raid, so long as they were backed by story lore and a little bit of cinematography. So, anyways, that's my acronym. I don't know if I've said anything valuable here. I've just decided to sit down and rant for a little bit. I hope I've hit on some points that at least ring true with some of you if you are MMO players. If you're not, check out MMOs. They're a lot of fun. The reason I primarily decided to make this video is because I love MMOs, and I don't like where they're going right now. I would love to see a reinvigoration, kind of a innervate, I suppose, if I wanted to keep this in theme of the entire system. And so hopefully someday it'll happen. We'll keep our eyes on Elder Scrolls Online as we get closer to release. I'll let you know if I get into the beta. I think I've got an NDA up right now, so I couldn't post anything about it. But once that NDA is lifted, if I do manage to get in, obviously I'll start talking about the content there. My name is Splattercat. If you just caught this video by, by chance, I do LPs and stuff of that nature. Thank you for joining me for this little rant. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, and also I'll see you in tomorrow's content. Take care out there, everybody, and we'll see you next time.